I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name? Paul, Paul Galvin from Tullamore. Paul, I'm happy you're back. And um, you said first time for you in Medjugorje for Christmas, For right? Christmas, yeah, and what a blessing. I'm here since the 9th of December and uh, leaving tomorrow to go to Zagreb. But God, what, a, what an amazing couple of weeks it's been. It's absolutely tremendous. Um, Can you describe just, a bit what happened? Oh, just midnight mass was incredible. Uh, such a beautiful mass, an hour and a half and the music and it just the, the whole thing was just you know you could feel the holy spirit over over the whole thing it was mm -hmm. amazing and then of course father leon's masses at 10 o'clock every morning and just the christmas atmosphere and the people i've got to know so much so much better here uh both locals and and some of the irish people that are living here irish and english people that are living here it's just been a really really wonderful wonderful experience mm -hmm. and please god it won't be my last time here at christmas yeah I'd it's different I'd, no? oh i'd recommend it to anybody if you can it was it's it's just so special and what i found really amazing was been away from all the commercialism at home and all the lack of god at home uh in christmas and i'm pointing the finger at myself with that one mm -hmm. because we, we better be careful we don't, we yeah, don't we get run down <laughs> yeah point your finger at yourself if but like. yeah no because i mean for yeah. so many years before yeah. i came back to my faith in my job it was a menswear store and um, it, w it was all about money it was all about the commercial side of christmas and i noticed even since i've got away from the business in the last six years uh you know i just so much aware of how commercial and uh, Christmas is at home and how God really doesn't get a, a look in mm -hmm. and it's not really about Jesus' birth but uh, here just in that whole build up from the ninth mm -hmm. up to now has been amazing and just been away from that and to see the local families here uh, went to mass there was a six o'clock mass here every morning in, in the mornings at um, in St. James's mm -hmm. and to go there and see the amount of young people that are in there and all the young families at Christmas and, and the depth of faith uh, is just incredible, absolutely incredible. And just gives you such confidence, you know, that please God, Ireland will bit by little bit, uh, we'll, we'll rediscover our faith again and, and, and get back to what's truly important in life. I mean, you, you have a personal story and you rediscovered the faith. Can you yep. explain a bit for you to inspire people what happened in your life when uh, you came back to the church and to faith? 2008, up to 2008, I was totally wrapped up in, in business, making money. Uh, God wasn't a big part of my life. I went to Mass on Sundays, maybe more out of tradition than anything else, said the odd prayer, but that was it. And for some reason, I don't know why, I put it down to my mother's prayers and a friend of hers that uh, um, used to come to Medjugorje. And for some reason, I came here for a week in 2008. And that changed everything for me. What happened? Um, to be honest with you, I for the first couple of days I came here, it was wet and windy. Mm -hmm. uh, there was way too much praying. I hated the place. <laughs> I'd say that hand and heart. If there was a flight out of here, an airport nearby, I was gone in the first two days. Absolutely. Yeah. And on the third day, a person I met out here, um, a couple of guys that I got to hang around with, and one of them said he was going to confession on the Tuesday or Wednesday of the week. Mm -hmm. And I said I'd just go for a walk up, and I went in and I met a fabulous young Canadian priest. I can still I can still remember it so clearly. And I spent forty minutes in confession with him, and that changed everything. And I think ever since then, not only do I love confession, mm -hmm. but I can't talk about it enough to other people especially because they bring groups out here now three times a year I saw, it's so and, inspiring and yeah. i think just to just to encourage people so so much uh, to go to confession what would uh, you tell them a lot of people are scared you know it yeah it's just it's different out here you know mm. it's about you can just open up you can open up your heart talk to the priest no matter what it is so it ended up like that 40 minutes ended up just not purely about listing off my sins or whatever it was a chat it was where I was coming from what mm -hmm. my faith had been and that priest was just time wasn't a problem just explaining things to me just you know in such a gentle way and it just made made such and such a difference and also mm -hmm. I think that week as well I really saw what the faith is about mm -hmm. up to that I was one of those that thought that the Catholic Church had all the problems mm -hmm. That needed to modernize and change and by the time i was finished here in the week i realized that it was me that needed to change there was nothing wrong with Catholic i think Church. this is very important for very a lot important. of us yeah. for me too before i was like that yeah and you know it's it's something i see at home sometimes where the faith has been watered down and where we're getting a faith in some of the churches that's just trying to be popular and you know um like i know parishes where there's either no confession or they never speak about it 
And I know, I often say, if I had come out to Medjugorje that week in 2008, and if I got a watered-down faith here, I would have probably given it up altogether because I would have seen no point in it, if mm -hmm. that's what I was been taught. But I really got it out here. And then the five stones, our ladies' five, five stones, really mm -hmm. struck a chord with me. And, mm -hmm. um, and I went home and got into Mass and Rosary and whatever else, and things then really started to change. And I knew I'd experienced such a peace and a joy out here I knew I didn't want to lose it mm -hmm. and um, I remember I went home conscious of what I got out here that I never ever ever had in all my years in business and I learned a great lesson mm -hmm. I was only home about three weeks and a bunch of my friends were going away for a weekend and mm -hmm. I went with them and of course there was no prayer no mass it was just a fun lads weekend and when I came home from that weekend it took me about three weeks to get my faith and the feeling that I had leaving Medjugorje back. And that was a great lesson because I realized if I drop the ball on this, I'll end up exactly where I had been. Yeah. And that wasn't a happy place. So I was- Same uh, with me, you know, yeah. it's so easy to fall again. You oh, know? so, so easy, you know. And I'm, I don't take it for granted now either, you know, yeah. all these years later. You but, have uh, the weapon, I think the rosary, that's that's part of it. Go to, go to yeah. confession when you, when you are, you oh, know? Oh yeah, I mean, I never let, never rarely ever let a month go by now without yeah. Confession. And I want to say something what you said, the watered down face today, a very famous German politician died, you know, he, he was the architect of the unification yep. and he said, as a conclusion of his life, if I talk after the mouth of the people, nobody will respect me. If I have an opinion yep. and if I'm defending the truth, then people will listen, you yeah, know, that's and so, we so listen, true. I listen too when I heard the truth. No? Absolutely, that's what it's all about. And um, you changed completely your life, still doing business or? No. Um, Oh Lord, it's a long story. But anyway, yeah. I didn't come back to Medjugorje for four years. and uh -huh. uh, But all that time, my faith was meaning more and more to me. And then uh -huh. I didn't come back till 2015. Uh -huh. And um, I was at the top of Apparition Hill and I opened my Bible and I just, I had asked Jesus, you know, if there's something that I was at that stage, you know, to do more for, for Jesus. And I just, I opened John's gospel and these words came off the page of me, resist no longer and follow me. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were illuminated on the page, but they weren't, but it really hit me. And my good friend, Jim Brown, who's my best friend and spiritual director, and I'm blessed to have him. Uh, I spoke to Jim about it and he, he just said, you know, I think, I think Jesus wants you out of the business. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he said, I don't know when. He said, I think your, your, your prayer should just be, let your will be done, not mine. And Within two years, my whole life was turned upside down because I had been in that business for, for um, by the time I sold it, it was 40 years. And mm -hmm. it had been everything to me. It was all consuming all the time. Uh, I know, I was self-employed, I know this. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I was in It's a passion was, also, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, but um, you know, and it was some pain from my childhood, I think, and, and working so hard, I think, helped me. Compensation, no? It helped me suppress that in some ways as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was, Tom, I, I was the most unlikely candidate for retirement because uh, not married, no children, no pastimes. Working, uh, working, working. Working, working, working. So, I mean, I remember ringing Jim when I was in the process of selling the business. And mm -hmm. uh, I said, Jim, you know, I could end up an alcoholic after I sell this business. I mean, there's no plan B. And he used to laugh at me and say, listen, do you think Jesus is going to take you out of the business? And, uh, and leave you with nothing to do. And boy, was he right. I mean, I just... What happened? Uh, well, first of all, w with the help of Jim, I started uh -huh. a prayer meeting in my house. And six years later, that's still still going. Thank God, Queen of Peace Prayer Group. Um, Beautiful. Anybody gets to see this at home, uh -huh. hi. <laughs> How can they reach you? Maybe somebody's listening now and he wants to get in yeah, contact. Yeah, uh, ju just a Queen of Peace Tullamore Prayer Group. Because I know there's a lot of prayer groups called Queen of Peace, but yeah. Queen of Peace Tullamore. And, mm -hmm. and they will we'll find it. Up. Is They'll there something it. on, on the Facebook. website? Or Sorry, Facebook? it's on Facebook. We're on fa live on Facebook every week. We're in my house and then it's it's also on Facebook. Fantastic. So that's, uh -huh. that's one thing. I'm also, Tom, very involved involved in uh, Mary's Meals yeah. and I uh, started a local group at home and I love that dearly and I can see Our Lady all over that every time uh -huh. we, we fundraise as well yeah. and I um, bring groups to Medjugorje now as well so I do three groups, one at Easter, one in October and then we do a family youth week the week before the youth festival yeah. and uh, just two years of that now uh -huh. and then the last thing was last year I was asked to get involved in giving talks in churches on Eucharistic Adoration. Uh -huh which uh, I didn't want to do. <laughs> well, actually, it's the funny thing is, I say now, the four things I'm doing that I dearly love, uh -huh. I would have never chosen. Uh -huh. I would have never. If somebody said to me, 
before I retired seven or eight years ago that mm -hmm. I my life will be as fulfilled doing what I'm doing now mm -hmm. I would have laughed at the thought of it because there's not one of those four things mm -hmm. I wanted to do mm -hmm. and now I love what I do so it just goes to show yeah. well from my point of view it just goes to show me that if I leave it up to Jesus he knows what's best for me so that's the secret because, what, what Jim Brown said Jim oh, said these, like thy will be done pray that and that's, that's my prayer for everything every day, every day now and it's, yeah. and it's a kind of like Jesus whatever's next is next you know what's best mm -hmm. because I spent enough time I spent enough years making mistakes <laughs> same as me I don't, I don't want to go back there Tom and uh, yeah, <coughs> me neither and no. you, 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 you make the experience that when you live in the divine will that you are at peace and joy when you oh. live in your ego you get again ag ag oh. agitated not happy absolutely 100%. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and know, the secret, and, yeah? You know, and, and just like that, I mean, thank God, I mean, the business was very successful over the years and whatever, but I never got any satisfaction out of it. I look back at, at mm -hmm. what I'm doing now in the last six years, and the last six years of my life have been over and above the best years mm -hmm. ever, by a long shot, by a long shot, just... I saw it when I came 2021. Yeah. I, one night I entered your place and I listened to you and the girl, what's her name again, the little Audrey? one? Uh, the oh. little one, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, I can do everything. She gave a testimony on the oh. channel as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's right. Anna, was it Anna? Anna, yeah, exactly, Anna. Anna. Yes, yeah, great and girl. I was yeah, inspired yeah. when I listened to you and I asked myself, who is Jim Brown? Everybody's talking oh, yeah. about Jim Brown. I met Jim Brown, sure. it's an amazing person. Like he's, you, uh, he's here at the moment. Uh, he's yeah, here yeah, in Medjugorje. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, if, if anybody comes, come to the prayer meetings of Jim Brown. Jim, he's you will yeah. uh, ask Datra at the uh, English seven, Mass. Seven in the morning and eight thirty in the evening. Yep, yeah, and yeah. you will get to that prayer yeah. meeting. God will bring you there. And as a conclusion now of your journey, what would you tell people now, Medjugorje oh, and, uh, and your journey? Do you know, it's only it's only uh, what I say to people who ask me about it or people who may be thinking of coming on pilgrimage. I said it's a week out of your life, mm -hmm. one week. Yeah. What, what have you got to lose? And I can guarantee you, you'll gain so, so much. It's changed my life completely for the better. Um, I just, every opportunity I get now, I'm in Medjugorje. It's, to me, I don't say it's my first home. It's not, home isn't home any longer. Medjugorje is my real home and then I, I live in Ireland. But uh, yeah, just, it's a week. Why not give it a shot? And then you said, you know, to come to the beginning again, you said first time here, like, like Christmas time, you see it's totally different, nobody here, totally peaceful. Oh, what yeah. would you say now as a conclusion of this journey? I think it was something I, I often remember Jim saying, that every pilgrimage is different. Mm -hmm. Even if you've been to Medjugorje 20 times, there's, there's always something different. Never, no two trips are the same. And this has certainly brought it home to me that mm -hmm. uh, been here at Christmas has been just so amazing. The peace, the quiet, uh, I was at the top of Cross Mountain, which is my favourite place. Why? And Why is it Cross Mountain? That's interesting. Well, <clears throat> the first year I was here, I was um, on the Friday of the group, uh -huh. uh, climbed Cross Mountain, mm -hmm. and I just loved it up there. I just, it was so beautiful. It was daylight today, Tom, beautiful, mm -hmm. clear day. And uh, all the crowd had gone down, and I stayed back for an hour or so up there. And just, it was towards the end of our week, and I was so grateful for what I'd experienced in the week. I mean, from the start of the week of hit Medjugorje mm -hmm. and now I'd have stayed a month. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was, and, and the peace and joy I had. So I was just at the base of the, the cross and I put my hands on it and I had my forehead on it and I just said, Jesus and Mary, I really love you and thank you for it. And uh, just an overwhelming feeling of being loved came over me. Yes. You know, from the soles of my feet to the top of my head. I, I know a lot of people say this in my imagination or whatever, it wasn't. I, can I experienced the I, same, I, so many people. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can relive that moment. And yeah. I don't, like I say, I don't know if it was two minutes or 20 minutes, I don't know, but it was the most amazing feeling ever. And I think that's probably why it's my favorite place. But I would also say, Tom, mm -hmm. um, that was a lovely experience. But if that had never happened, my life had still changed from confession. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a lovely thing to happen at the end of the week, yeah. but I know hands and heart, I still would have changed my life if that hadn't happened. You know, and so. you can go everywhere. Don't only think you can do that in Medjugorje. No. Go if you have the chance. Pray yeah. for a good priest and go. Yeah. Go to another parish if you are ashamed to go to your own priest. Exactly. There are so many parishes in Ireland, everywhere there around is, the world. There's some, some tremendous priests in Ireland. Yeah. 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 You can find it and you will find it because will, God loves sure. the sinner, the repentant yeah, sinner, you know? Yeah. And I would say anybody, if you get the opportunity to go to Jim's Brown, Jim yes. Brown's yes. Uh, um, prayer room, in Kiladoon and Mayo. Oh, incredible what's going on up there, four prayer meetings a week and retreats and uh, some great priests going up there saying masses and having weekend retreats is an amazing place. Yeah. Wow, what can I yeah. say? Thank you so much all, Tom, for that beautiful for that. interview. And I just happened to spot you on the bike there a minute yeah. ago. God bless you. <laughs>